Welcome back guys. Today is gonna to be a little bit of a different video than normal. We're gonna do a how-to on how to build a sturgeon shack. Uh, Dad and I bought a bow frame this year. It's uh, six and a half by 12 feet long. And we're gonna show you how we're gonna build it. So we started off by um, leveling it out, so to speak, with uh, these bricks, just so it's easier to work on instead of having this tongue down. Then you don't have to worry about this uh, tongue being up in the air. So we're gonna start off with the frame, which is two by fours that are 12 feet long. We, they're all treated, everything for the floor is treated. The screws are all stainless steel because that's gonna uh, come in contact with the water and snow the most. And uh, we're gonna show you how to frame it out and how we do it with the size of our hole and where we're putting the hole placement and how to go around this axle that runs through there. So uh, we're gonna get into that and hope you guys enjoy. Okay guys, so we measured it out. Um, we got 144 inches the whole way. We're gonna run these the long way. They're a little, they're about a half inch too long, so we're gonna trim them down to 144 exactly. And then those are gonna run the whole way. And then after that, we're gonna cut uh, the ones to go for the six and a half foot, but we're gonna cut those down smaller so they fit inside. And we're gonna screw them all together. And then we're gonna figure out how to notch that uh, axle out. And then we're gonna put the frame for our hole. We're gonna frame out our hole and throw some more uh, cross bracing in there. And that should do it for the frame. Plus we gotta put this stuff on the top, uh, the wood on the top, but we'll show you that after. So we uh, measured out the frame, just the outside, no uh, braces are framed out the hole yet. We just measured that out. Now we're gonna take it out of the frame itself and put it together on the grass. And then we're gonna put in our um, floor uh, bracing and our frame outer hole. This way uh, we're not taking it in and out, in and out of the frame over there. Uh, the boards have been sitting in our garage since March and they were treated. So obviously they're gonna be a little warped um, but that'll straighten it all out once we uh, bolt them together and screw them together. So this is what it looks like now, but we're gonna have uh, another brace going through there, here, maybe even one more back here, and then we'll have some crossing going back and forth just for some extra support. But, so we're gonna put it all together before we drop it into the shack frame over there. We finished framing it up and we uh, dropped it in there and it actually worked out pretty good. Just had to do a little tapping to get it in, but for the how warped the boards were, it worked out pretty well. Um, we added these like cross bracing and I think that'll, that'll help a lot, especially down here where all the foot traffic is because this is where the door is going to be. You know, walk in here and more likely when people come to visit, they'll be standing over here and not jumping the hole. So um, we did a three foot. 10 inch hole we didn't want to do four just a little extra room over here um, this is a lot bigger than the one we sat in i shouldn't say a lot bigger but it was three and a half foot but that extra four inches is going to seem like a lot i believe when we're in the shack we didn't want to go four feet but i think the four or the 310 is going to work out pretty good right now my dad's going around putting all these marks um, evenly spacing out these bolts that we're going to run through there to bolt the frame and the uh, wood together. So we're using these, uh, I think they're about three inch bolts. i just get out and measure, but uh, we're gonna pilot, drill a pilot hole with 
a smaller bit then we'll come through with the bigger bit and we're gonna wash put some washers and uh, then bolt them down together and we're gonna do three on this side three on the back side five and five Yeah, I know, but... He's eating that. Oops. Now we just gotta make sure that those washer or that bolt won't hit this. With what? This thing? Yeah. Oh, I won't. battery still baby oh cause you switched you don't think I'm going like too high or too low do you do? Mm -mm. You draining it right now, Jim? Or? Mm hmm. You what? I'll drain the pool. Yeah, I bought a pump. So now I can uh, I'll put the holes and put the water on the grass that's dried up and water the water. How many we want to do? Because usually I just start going buck crazy and it. Pack in the four corners for sure, and then that way it won't slide on you. You can get a little bit of prying right there. Screw it that way or no? Screw it this way? It's just a little. Yeah, I agree. Uh, hammer? Get it started. Yeah, if you can just get the claw in there maybe. Mm -hmm. Get it right up in there, yeah. 
sir, right there, right there. You can come back a little bit. No, that other side still needs more. Yeah, that's... Welcome back guys, it's been a while since we uh, were building on our shack. We've been busy and uh, bowl season opened up, but tonight we got a free night, so we're gonna try and uh, knock out framing out the walls, see how far we get, but um, we're doing a pretty simple style, just like a house, uh, every 16 inches, um, unless you got an end one where it falls on, you need to throw one in there, but the two, the long walls and the back wall are gonna be easy because there's no doors or windows. So those are just gonna be 16 on center. Uh, the back wall is gonna have a door in the middle and we'll show you how to do that when we get to that one. I think we're gonna tackle that last. Um, so for the roof, we're gonna, we're not putting a peaked roof. We're gonna do a slant from, or a pitch I should say. So one side, our right side is gonna be 6.5 and then we're gonna go drop down to 6.3 for all the water runoff. We're also gonna frame out the roof so we have a place and we're gonna throw some probably quarter inch uh, plywood on top of that so we have a place to a, put our rubber onto so we're not just putting the rubber onto the uh, studs. But that's that's a ways down the road yet. So like I said, we're gonna try and uh, bang out these walls and frame them and after we get the first one done, we'll uh, show you guys what it looks like. Okay guys, so we got three of our four walls uh, framed up. We just didn't frame up our door yet because we gotta do some more uh, planning out for that. But so basically for this, we did, this is our long wall and it's 12 feet. So we had to cut a piece cause obviously our two by eight, two by two is only coming eight foot sticks. So then cut another one at three nine, three foot nine because these are going inside the outside walls or the end walls. So that takes off an inch and a half on each end, giving us a three inch total uh, deduction. So we did this and then we double studded it basically, and then screwed all those together like so, so that way it conjoined it. Instead of like trying to toenail it or something like that, that's what we did uh, for that one. And the wall over there, here is our front wall, which is gonna go right up here. That's just normal 16 on center. I mean, obviously with this one, uh, we this is what we, you end up with so we did that we're gonna try and throw all these up tonight these three up um, we'll see how that goes we're running a little low on two by twos but I think we'll have enough for finishing our walls and stuff and we'll just need to get some more for the roof but that's for later so we're gonna throw these up and see how it looks Okay, so before we throw on the rest of our composite, we already got one on. I was just gonna show you guys uh, kind of what our frame frame looks like. 
the walls are pretty self-explanatory every 16 on center except for when you run out then you get your closest one to 16. we had a double stud right here just because our uh, two by twos only come in eight foot sections so then we just put double studs and screwed them down and then uh, conjoined them together like that i think it works pretty good it's actually a lot sturdier than i thought it was going to be for the rough we did a little different so we put two by fours on each side of the hole just because that's where our spears are going to hang so we wanted something sturdy to screw into and we also threw a two by four right over the middle of the hole because that's where we're going to put our decoys and a handle to uh, be able to jump across the hole other than that it's oh and the door just we framed up the door back here we still got we put it made it two feet wide we still got a a top piece on and build the door but it's going to swing open this way we put ours on the back so it's a lot easier to pull fish out and um it's not opening up you don't got to worry about it opening up going down the road and ripping off so we're gonna finish putting all the composite on tonight and that'll probably be it for a couple days A lot's kind of happened since I uh, last talked to you guys on here with our shack. Dad and I got all of the sides up. Everything's framed and sheeted with our composite. And we also got the roof, which I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but uh, we just... Um, just did, uh, I believe it's three A's. I can't quite remember, but I believe it's three A's uh, plywood for the roof because we are going to um, be putting a rubber roof on it. And we just wanted a little more support. Uh, we're not going with the tin roof because obviously that uh, really affects your cell service. And when we were putting all these sides on, we uh, took a, well, Dad marked out all the studs going this way, and then we measured down almost equidistance from here, marked holes and ran a string across, so all the screws are pretty much straight and level, and if you look down, you can kind of see that. So we did that, and I think today we still got, well, we still got a caulk, obviously that, but and the corners are gonna go on after we get the roof on, but that's that's the next order of business, I believe. We got, we got the rubber roof, we got some, tar to put down before we put the roof the rubber part on to also help it just stick better and then we bought these i believe they're aluminum kind of kind of like gutter edges not gutter edges but they'll uh the, the rubber will go underneath it and then we're just going to screw through the rubber and the composite into the studs so i i think that's our best option a lot of people have these we I never seen ones like these with this little uh, lip on it, but I think that's gonna be a lot more beneficial than just a straight piece for us. So that's our plan today is try and get that on. I know it's getting, it's already October. Before we know it, it'll be uh, snowing. So we're trying to get it all insulated or well, not insulated, but enclosed so that we can work on it when it's winter and snowing out as long as we're working inside. So that's our plan today. And 
We'll catch back with you guys after we uh, get that all done. Guys, welcome back. It's been a while since we've worked on this. Deer season was, we were pretty much busy the whole month of November. Every weekend after work, we were doing a lot of hunting. So December 2nd, we're finally gonna make a quick little push here to hopefully get as much done as we can before it gets really cold. Um, we got the outer shell on. So today we're gonna do some wiring and I think try and get the tail lights hooked up to here, to the front, and we'll show you what we're gonna do up there because we have a, different kind of plug-ins so you don't have to have that plug hang off while you're driving or while it's parked or whatever. And then um, for our wiring, I'm just running 14-2. We're having three three outlets, one by each of us and then one up here for filming to plug the GoPro into, light switch, and then uh, that's it. So we're just gonna, oh, two lights. So then we're just gonna wire that all back and then I'm gonna, I have an inverter. We'll get into that when we get there, but we have an inverter that we're just gonna hook up to a battery. So we're gonna, we're gonna get into that right now, so. We got some good weather today, so Dad and I are gonna try and um, put up the walls in the shack so we can transport it to the shed that we're gonna be working on and end up painting all that because otherwise everything's gonna fall off. All the insulation's gonna come out if we try to trailer it. Um, we finally got the uh, trailer lights all figured out. They all work. We just had to flip two wires around. Um, so this is all gonna get stapled up here and uh, obviously we're gonna run I think we got quarter inch sheets of plywood to go over that and yeah, this is pretty much what it looks like um, before we insulate or put the walls in or the, sh the boards over it we got all this um, this is just our wires for we got an outlet up here outlet down there gonna be light switches over here um, so that way when I'm over here to hook the battery up, because that's where it's going to come out and do the inverter to the battery, uh, I can just flip the lights on. And just two lights, one there, one there, and then one other outlet down here for whoever sits on this side of the hole, which is probably going to be me. Uh, I think we're going to help. We're going to put our radio up here. And I'm not sure why he put, well, these are if we put any signs on the outside, but we got more bracing down there for um, the hinges for the gates, the trap doors, which are these pieces of subfloor. And I think that's kind of the plan of the day, finish insulating and get everything um, buttoned up so we can trailer it. And we put the door on last weekend, I think, 
turned out pretty good. We uh, we put this rubber on here, kind of keep it more airtight, so to say, because it's obviously not. We built the door, so it was a little off track wise. Right here, you can see a little bit. So we put that rubber around, which I think is going to help a lot, and it kind of makes it look a little better. So that's what we did, and braced it all up for the door handles. And we got to put our your sign. Are you supposed to? Is it required to label like your address and stuff on it? Yes. Yeah. So we got a nameplate made up of that's my name and my address. So if someone, I guess, ever needs to contact you or something on the lake you have that so that's what all that bracing on the door is for we got we're gonna put that like right here and we got our handle on there so like i said it's a good day so we're gonna try and pound pound out some stuff so we can get it to the shed so stick with us All right, guys, so it's been a while. This is what the ceiling looks like. This is our uh, lighting wire, and this is for our uh, trailer harness. That's all tucked up in through there, which is nice. It's out of the way. You don't have to worry about hitting it. Uh, this is going to be one of our lights, and then we got another light going over there. Um, I just bought these from Menards. They're like little can lights. This is just, we screw it into the stud, and... Well, uh, when we put the ceiling up, we're just gonna cut a little hole big enough for the light to flip up into it. We'll show you that, but these are just plug and play. That's pretty nice. Uh, we got an outlet right here, right above the hole, right above the hole for uh, filming. This is where my GoPro is gonna go, and so this way it can car or charge constantly and I don't have to keep switching batteries out. Got another light. This is where my dad's light's gonna be. Um, the switch for the lighting is going to be over there, so that way when I go over there to hook the battery up, I can just flip the light on. Outlet for me, outlet for dad, and then, so we ran all of our wiring through here, and we stuck it out right here, because this is where our battery's going to go, and I got to switch these ends out, because they're a little too big to fit into the inverter, but so the inverter is going to plug in we'll plug this into right here the battery's going to sit in the corner inverter goes to this turn the inverter on and then i flip that light switch i got power and uh the outlets are going to be on whenever the inverter's on so that's pretty much what we're doing i think we're going to try and get these uh the ceiling up so we can get it to that shed we're going to take it to to paint dad also put the trap doors in which is nice we used some subflooring that we got, but we're gonna end up putting like little L hooks right here. So when you flip it up, you just pull this L hook down and they stay up. I mean, that's kind of normal, I think, for a lot of shanties, at least the ones I've been in. Right now, dad's just working on finishing up, getting the door all um, closed up. This is where our handle is. So we had to drill that hole through here to get your you had to drill that hole through there to get your handle. Uh, let me just show you. So this part's obviously got to go through there to connect on your backside so you can twist it from the inside to get out. We ended up, we had a, that one to start, but then we ended up getting a black one. I don't know where that is. But, oh. oh, and this is our bat. This is the battery case that we're gonna put that battery in, I believe. See how well that works. This is their new door handle because we had everything else was uh, black, so we we're gonna go with that. My name plates black on there, and we got a chain for our propane tank. There's the L hooks. Well, that's kind of as far as we we're gonna try and get today. Hello guys, 
It looks a little different in the shack now. Uh, Dad got it all painted up, all black, so it looks pretty good. We got the lights running in here. Um, I'm just in here today. I'm gonna put up the radio, the CD, get the inverter and battery all mounted up and tucked away in the corner. And um, probably put up some cover plates for the outlets and light switch. And uh, other than that, I mean, we're, oh, I'm putting carpet too. We're getting close. We're getting really close. I got some indoor outdoor carpet, just some pretty cheap black stuff. Uh, so we'll do that today. Yeah, I got the heater all mounted. It's coming along. We're almost, we're getting close. And good thing because Spearing's like three weeks away, maybe. Something like that. Yeah, three weeks. So just gonna, I'll show you guys when I'm all done with that. But that's, that's the plan for today. Well guys, I got the carpets in, uh, speakers, or the radio's working, I connected to the speaker, we mounted it with these two bracket bars, so that way we don't have to take it out, like, you know, it gets bumpy on the ice and whatnot, so, um, then we got these two shelves for the radio, we still gotta secure that in there and tidy up all these wires and everything like that. Inverter's gonna stay in here permanently, and this is the batteries in this battery box, which is gonna get, we're gonna take that out tonight, obviously, and probably end up leaving it in there just for the season but if the battery starts getting drained or whatever we'll take it home and charge it uh we got the cv hooked up i gotta tidy up all these wires yeah we were just making sure everything worked antenna goes out for that cv and the antenna goes out this side for the radio uh, i got the carpet in went out pretty well we just stapled it i cut it to length and stapled it down so that way if we ever have to replace all i gotta just pull off some staples and put some new ones in there's like 50 54 cents a square foot pretty cheap actually for indoor outdoor carpet um what else lights work nice easy switch right here and uh yeah that's it we just gotta put some put the cover plates on on all the outlets screw in our uh string holders or rope holders for our spears and spear or um screw in our spear holders i'm gonna mount my gopro mount up there and that's pretty much it then. I think I think we're we're getting close, thankfully, because season's coming in three weeks. Three weeks from today, yeah. We are done with the shack. Just a few minor uh, cosmetics to finish up here, but it's spearable, so that's good. Uh, a little bit about everything we did here. This is just an old speaker we had at home. I think it was from a TV, and we hooked it up, and it works. So we threw it in here. It's kind of nice. We got these these brackets that Dad bought. I mean, this thing is not going anywhere. We're going to leave it in here, obviously, so we don't have to worry about driving when we're taking it over, like, all ice and all that bumpiness. Car radio we got right here. Uh, I think we got it from Walmart or something, like 90 bucks. Just wired everything up down to the battery because we're going to have a battery that runs our inverter. We have a 1,000-watt uh, inverter. And through here, these are for the battery to the inverter. And then these two leads are going to go onto the battery, which power the radio and they come over all the way down to here to power the CB. So it's a pretty nice little setup we got there. I kind of stapled everything up against the wall to tidy it up a little bit. Uh, this antenna goes out for the CB, and then we got another antenna that goes out here for the radio, and it all works pretty slick. And then this is just the battery cover. You tuck that underneath there, so it's all nice kind of in this corner, not taking up too much space. Coat holder. So I put the light switch over here because I figured if we're gonna come over here to hook the battery up anyway, might as well hook the battery up and turn the light switch on instead of jumping back over the hole when it's dark. So I did that. Um, I got an outlet right here for this where I'll be sitting if you want to charge your phone or something like that. Outlet over by dad's spot. And then we also put one up in the ceiling uh, for filming on the GoPro. I figured this is so we can charge it constantly and don't have to worry about switching batteries and missing something. And so put that up there. This inverter just has two plugs and one of these is for our outlets and the other one is for the lights, so I just put them separate to make it easier. Up here we got our spear holders. Down here is where we're gonna connect our ropes for the spear, so that if the spear fish doesn't take off and you don't lose your rope and whatnot. We put them back a little bit, which I think is nicer. Uh, out of the way, you can wind your rope up back here, don't have to worry about it. We got some chairs, we got some 360 swivel chairs. They're hunting chairs, but I think these will be nice because I mean, you can only sit looking down like this for so long, so you can sit twisted or whatnot, and a couple other chairs for if guests come. So yeah, and we'll drop these trap doors down. We got a little buckle or whatever you want to call it that latches, that's uh, latch, that just latches the doors closed so they don't bounce up and down when you're driving. 
My dad wanted to get this plank to jump across. Instead of jumping across the hole, you can lay this down and walk across, which I wasn't too fond of at first, but now I think it's a great idea because this hole is a lot bigger. It's um, three foot ten across, and that's kind of a pretty long stride to get across when you got spears and decoys all down in the, the hole. So I'm glad he bought this. It's pretty nice. Pretty much it for over here. This side, all we've got is uh, the heater. Uh, I think we got it from Menards. It's fairly cheap, and it we've used it in our deer stands, and it heats up very quick. So uh, we're pretty happy with that. Everything's blacked out in here, minus the lights, but can't really tell about that. So that's all it for in here. Outside, the, um, got the name plate on. The wiring harness and the lights are all up in the ceiling. Everything's tucked up in there. Put the rubber around the door. We still got to put rubber on the inside of the door, but that's we'll do that this week. This is for running the propane line out nice and kind of clean. You don't just have a hole sitting there. And we put this giant eye bolt in to run your chain through for your propane tank so you can lock that up and don't have to worry about someone coming and taking that because that tends to happen. We got these nice corners made when we got our uh, composite from our buddy Terry Huseman. So thanks to him, this looks nice and clean. We really appreciate that. And then basically we just caulked all these seams. There's just one seam around all the way. Caulked uh, the seams down where they meet before we put the corners on. This uh, rain, it's like a drip edge basically. It comes down, runs the water all the way down, which I think is really nice. And then... Pretty much all we did in the front was we put up two holders for the antennas like I was showing you guys earlier. And this is what I think is pretty cool. We, this is where our wiring harness would come out and we, we rigged it up to where this is a female end and there's a female end on the truck. So all we have is about an eight foot cord with two male ends on it. Plug it into there, plug it into the truck and it works perfect. You don't have to worry about like leaving your wiring harness exposed which i think is really nice because that tends to how they go bad so all you have to do is plug it in plug it in and when you're done take it out and it's all sealed away pretty nicely and the last thing a little bit about the bow frame is bow frame is where we got it from the company makes it other companies make it but we just got it from bow frame they're very easy to use by yourself which is awesome because no one wants to be out there with a couple people if you can't you get help and so basically all you do is pull that down snap that one in snap the other one in and you're good to go lift it up and it's just so much easier than pulling it on skis or whatnot but that's pretty much it for the shack and we really appreciate you guys watching and following along and it was built hopefully we can bring you guys some content this year from the shack we're really hoping so season's a week from today so appreciate you guys watching and like and subscribe thanks for watching